everybody. Welcome to the Hormone Hacker Revolution. We are educating, empowering, and inspiring you to balance your chemistry so that you can have increased energy, improved moods, so that you can burn fat, and you can truly enjoy your life. I'm your host, Dr. Michelle Sands, and I promise to bring you throughout this event the best and most valuable tools and resources so that you can finally live, grow, and thrive naturally. So that's what it's all about. It's about living your best life, and that is how we are going to get to where we want to go by balancing our bodies, our minds, and our chemistry. So today I'm super excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Dr. Evan Hurt. And he is well known in the field for helping people really overcome chronic fatigue and to get that energy that they need so that they can do the things they love, so that they have the power to pursue their passion, but also the energy to play with their kids and have a romantic life with their husband and really enjoy their life. And so Evan actually wrote Fix Your Fatigue. It's a four-step process to resolving chronic fatigue and really reclaiming your life. And so he has worked with hundreds of people at the Hirsch Center for Integrative Medicine, which is his practice, and that is in Olympia, Washington. But his goal is actually to impact the lives of over 100,000 people. And he plans to do this through his books, through his lectures, by teaching other practitioners how to follow his simple process to really help everyone overcome fatigue. And so I know that those of you who have been following me for a while and those of you who are new to the Hormone Hacker Revolution, that energy and fatigue is a big concern, especially for moms or for busy professionals. We need our energy to really enjoy our life. So today we're going to be talking about how do we overcome that? How do we fix our fatigue? And what is cortisol? What does that hormone have to do with it? So Dr. Evan, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the Hormone Hacker Revolution. Thanks so much for having me, Dr. Michelle. Oh, you're so welcome. So I was really excited to have you on because, like I said, fatigue is such a huge issue. And it's really, there's a lot more to it than just getting more sleep, right? I mean, that's definitely part of it. And it's sometimes overlooked by a lot of people um, that sleep is very important. But there's some other issues going on that can prevent us from getting the proper sleep and also drain our energy throughout the day. So I know that you know this firsthand. So if you can tell us a little bit about your story and what got you really interested in dedicating your practice to helping people overcome chronic fatigue. Yeah, absolutely. So when I started my residency program about, gosh, just a couple months in, I met my wife. She was vibrant and strong and amazing, and she still is amazing and always has been amazing, but she got fatigue, and she had fatigue for three years, and here I am in residency, family medicine residency, and I can't help her. You know, I don't have the time to research. I, you know, I, I'm reading. I'm trying to learn. can't learn anything, so she taught me a whole lot about fatigue, and then I graduated residency. We had a child. I started a business, and then I got fatigue, and I had fatigue for five years. And it was horrible. The brain fog, muscle pain. I had to cut back my hours. I was starting my practice, and I totally had to cut back and allow my uh, bring on a, an associate so that they could see a lot of my patients. And it was it was awful. So I t- I know how people struggle with fatigue, and so I, I committed myself to learning as much as possible. And so I went to as many conferences as possible, talked to as many practitioners as possible, and went through. Um, integrative medicine and then functional medicine and then environmental medicine and then did specific trainings in infections and bringing this all together and then like you said I've, I've fortunately I've been very fortunate to help hundreds of people in my practice and and now my mission is to help a hundred thousand people resolve their chronic fatigue that's so awesome and, and and Dr. Evan didn't even mention that not only does he have a thriving practice but he also finds the time to play basketball to sing in musicals and to hip hop dance with his young child so that is just amazing so Dr. Evan I'm gonna put you on the spot what is your favorite musical and can you sing us a line from it uh, <laughs> um I think my favorite musical of all time probably is Les Mis, Les Miserables can you sing us a, a line? Sure. So there's this great scene where Jean Valjean is, um, his, his future son-in-law is dying, and he's praying to God. And so he sings this song, God on High. 
which is great. It's a little bit high for me, but um, I'll sing a little line for you. So he says, um, God on high, hear my prayer. Oh my goodness, that was amazing, bravo. (laughs) Dr. Evan had no idea I was gonna ask him that, so you are such a great (laughs) part, Dr. Evan. Thank you so much for that. All right, so back to the topic at hand. I I apologize (laughs) if I put you on the spot there. (laughs) Um, Is Is it hot in here? Yeah, <laughs> it's, not your a little bit. it's just <laughs> that's another topic. That's for another day. But say we're talking about cortisol, and cortisol is produced by the adrenal glands. So for those of you who are not um, up to speed on all the biology involved in uh, our stress hormones, Dr. Evan, can you give us a layman's breakdown of what the adrenal glands are and what they have to do with? cortisol and what cortisol has to do with fatigue. Absolutely. So the adrenal glands are these little small triangular glands about the size of a walnut that exist on top of the kidneys, both kidneys. So there's two of them, one on each side. And they produce a number of things, but the main hormone that they produce is cortisol. And cortisol, which I'm so excited about talking about today, because I think cortisol really is the most important hormone in the body because it regulates the thyroid, it regulates the sex hormones, it regulates the relationship with the brain, it regulates the immune system, insulin and blood sugars, inflammation. So it's, it's just so incredibly important. And when people get fatigued, inevitably, they're going to have adrenal fatigue. So adrenal fatigue um, is, may, not, may be the cause. You know, a lot of people, you know, if they're looking online and they go to YouTube or whatever and they, mm-hmm. they're reading about people saying adrenal fatigue is the cause of your fatigue, well, mm-hmm. it's usually a symptom of your mm-hmm. fatigue because there's usually causes of the adrenal fatigue. Which are exactly that's know, interesting. I, it's, I, I'm just sorry to interrupt you there for a second, but so what? So cortisol actually, what the way you're framing it, just it's actually something good, right? We need cortisol to regulate our hormones and a lot of different functions in the body, and a lot of times we vilify cortisol. It's a stress hormone, and, and like we don't want a lot of cortisol. Um, but can you put that in perspective? for people listening who are uh, afraid of cortisol. (laughs) Absolutely. So cortisol is a steroid, which is another reason why people are afraid of it, because you hear steroid, you hear prednisone, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's it's this big bad thing. But yeah, there's there's an optimal range for cortisol. And, you know, in order to, for us to deal with stress, you know, you have an acute stressor, like, you know, uh, you're at work, something happens, your cortisol is going to go up but it's going to come down too. And it's only when you get those chronic stressors that cortisol goes up, it stays up. And by riding high on your cortisol, that's what you're talking about where it's a problem, where you're riding high on that cortisol and eventually it starts getting depleted. The adrenals can only produce enough cortisol um, for a period of time. And then they start running out and your adrenal reserves, your DHEA starts running out. And you kind of go through these seven stages of, of adrenal fatigue where the cortisol begins to dip lower and lower and lower until you start getting symptoms of fatigue and then it starts affecting all of your other organ systems. So when would a person realize that this is going on? Like in, oftentimes people are at that high and, and don't actually realize that there's something wrong because you tend to have a little bit more energy when you're arriving in that wave. So um, you actually have a, a system of seven things that you can that drain the adrenal glands and then some things we can do to fix them. So what are some of the things that can cause us to have go on that roller coaster to begin with? Absolutely. So stress, and we're going to talk about the different kinds of stress. So there's more than just mental, emotional stress, you know, divorce, work stress, relationship stress, whatever. There's, so that's mental, emotional. And then there's energetic stressors. So that could be electricity, you know, all of these Mm. um, things that you plug into the wall or that have batteries, they emit electromagnetic frequencies that can mess with your own electricity. If you're not getting into, um, nature enough that's going to mess with it as well and then the other one is um is the physical stressors and so that's heavy metals heavy metal toxic um, toxicity chemicals molds infections allergies so to put them all together the seven are heavy metals chemicals molds 
infections, allergies, emotions, and EMFs. Wow. So yeah, so all those things, and likely you're not just affected by one of those, right? If you're living in uh, today's day and age, we're, we're constantly using electronic devices. There's uh, toxins in our food, in our water, in our air. You know, we definitely have some mental, emotional stress if we have a job or a family or mom or dad. <laughs> like there's definitely some stress. Uh, so yeah, so how do we, what do we do to navigate that? Because we can't remove ourselves from all the stress. Right. So, you know, we, we always like to go back to the foundations, you know, so it's making sure that you're getting good sleep. And sometimes you may be doing everything right. You may have, you know, the beautiful uh, sleep sanctuary, but you're still having problems with sleep. And sometimes it's a kind of a catch 22 with your adrenal glands. And just a side note on sleep, you know, I get more people to sleep by giving them adrenals, thyroid, B12, iron in the morning than I do by giving people anything at night. And that's because a lot of times sleep is a circadian rhythm problem mm -hmm. where you're, you're not getting enough of the good juice during the day so that you can fall asleep at night. You're kind of doing this sort of, I'm kind of awake, kind of asleep during the day, and then you do that same thing at night. So that's the first one is sleep and how important it is to really cultivate that. And I haven't found anybody who's got fatigue who can get better without going to bed at around 10, 10.30. Yeah, so so that is I find that to be the like the sweet spot, and I find that when people stay up past that, like towards eleven, eleven thirty, then oftentimes we we like almost trick ourselves, or maybe it's we're not tricking ourselves. It probably is a physiological response where we actually wake up again, and then it makes it even harder for us to sleep. And I'm you know, one of the people that has to work on that because a lot of times I'll get caught up in my work and want to read some lab results late at night when my son goes to bed. And if I pass that 1030 time frame, I often have trouble getting to sleep myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And it seems like that there's, you know, that second wind that mm -hmm. people are getting. And it's because of this, you know, your, your circadian rhythm is off and the body's like, oh, you, you, you missed that window. Yeah. And so now you're awake. And so I'm just going to give you a little bit more energy and then you can't fall asleep. Right. Well, what I love that you said is like working on it in the morning. And one of the things that I do with a lot of my patients is people are having trouble with their sleep cycle, having them go outside and get some sunlight first thing in the morning for about 15 minutes. I, I find that really helps to like tell the body that that is morning and then 12 hours later, it knows that it's night. And so I don't know if you find the same thing to be true, but I, I love the idea of working at, like, like that good night sleep starts first thing in the morning. Absolutely, yeah, and it works, you know, both ways because, you know, at night, you know, you don't want to be looking into bright screens, you know, you, know, you want to make sure you've got your blue blocker on. You know, I'm in the Pacific Northwest, and so it's not getting dark until like 9, 9.30, and so we've got blackout curtains, you know, mm -hmm. make sure my daughter gets her rest. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it, you, you actually, you definitely have to trigger the body to remind it what's day and what's night. Yeah, so just so for people who aren't familiar, so you say have your blue blockers on, those are special glasses to uh, block out the blue light, correct? Well, it can be, I've got them on my glasses, but you can also get them on your computer. Mm. You can put them on your phone too, and it gives it a little bit of an orange tint, but it's great for not stimulating the pineal gland to think that you're supposed to be awake. So, and then I also it's try a little, not, That's your little hack for still being able to use your devices in the evening. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. And those are, those are in my book, but the, the products that I like are Flux, F dot L-U-X is great for the computer. And then um, it depends on whether you've got an Android or an iPhone, but the one that I use on Android is Twilight. And those are free and uh, they work great. And so, and they'll actually go with the sunset. So if you tell it where you are in the world, um, it'll, it'll bring it down and then you can adjust it if you want to adjust the brightness and whatnot. Oh, that's interesting. So that, the one question I have is... Is there, do we require a different amount of sleep for the different seasons uh, as humans? Like, is, are we supposed to be up longer when the sun's out longer? That's a really great question. Um, and I don't, I don't have an answer to it. I mean, uh. I think that 
um, I continue to try to get the same amount of sleep, go to bed at the same time, and it, it seems to work best for my body than, than trying to adjust. But I know like with our kids, right, they're going to stay up later, it seems, just physiologically with the later bedtimes. You know, you put them at, at the normal bedtime, and then all of a sudden they're not falling asleep the way that they normally did, you know, and they need Yeah, to- that's why I ask because honestly I don't know the answer either. And we have a two-year-old, and right now it's summertime in Vermont, and it stays light until about about nine o'clock but in the winter time it gets dark at like 4 30 or 5 in the afternoon so I'm just wondering if like evolutionary like did people sleep longer when the days are shorter right and then and- you, then you take it into the latitude you know and there's some people you know at the equator obviously you know where it's going to be different so right that's yeah. so true yeah very interesting well, that was just a side note but <laughs> um yeah so we have couple of different methods and then do you have do you have seven different ways that people can improve? right so we were talking about sleep mm-hmm. and then additionally with the foundations you know our exercise mm-hmm. and uh, you know I consider meditation to be you know super important or some sort of you know break mindfulness exercise that works really well um, and then foods you know making sure you're getting rid of any toxic foods in the body that might be causing you to have fatigue or causing you to drain your cortisol. Because remember, cortisol is the body's main Mm anti-inflammatory. And anything that's going to trigger the immune system has the potential to cause inflammation. And so that's where, um, you know, eliminating gluten and dairy and soy and corn and sugar and caffeine is a really big one, are all going to really tax the adrenal gland, tax your cortisol. And you don't have to eliminate all of those things. Oftentimes, gluten, dairy, sugar, and caffeine is enough depending on what you're dealing with. But if you have autoimmune disease or more issues with your immune system, you're going to want to do more of a complete food elimination diet. But those are kind of my my foundations. And then, you know, diving into the other things, you know, heavy metals, chemicals, all of those are also causing inflammation in the body that once they're removed, that will decrease that. And in turn, it will um, allow the cortisol to be more functional. So if someone's eating like a gluten-free, dairy-free, anti-inflammatory diet, but they're still feeling tired, um, what kind of tests do you run with your patients to, to identify what, what's going on with them and is it their adrenals? Sure, absolutely. So I always like to get people strong first before I start removing the crap out of the body. I'll, I'll use, you know, crap as a technical term. I <laughs> I'll also cause, call those things the usual suspects, um, like heavy metals, chemicals, molds, infections, and all that. But I always like to make people more robust. And so that's boosting, that's making sure their adrenals are good, their thyroid is good, their um, sex hormones are good, and then their nutrients are good. So that's you know, B12 and whatnot. But um, I mean, I can go into the testing for each of these, or is there certain ones that you want to hear more about? Um, I just, I was, can, I was, Wondering which tests you do for the adrenals, what you think is the best method of testing? Because there's some controversy over whether saliva testing is the best, or is it the dry urine test, or is it a blood test? Yeah, I think that I think they're all fine. I prefer to do the blood testing right now because I do it as part of a big panel and it's just Mm -hmm. easier patients getting the blood drawn already and I have comfort using it and so I'll do a morning cortisol Mm -hmm. not a free cortisol but just a morning cortisol which um, I like to do between 7 and 9 in the morning and I want the level to be between 15 and 25 okay and then I look at DHEA sulfate which is a marker of the adrenal reserves Mm -hmm. and I like that to be above 150, like between 150 and 200 for women, and three to 400 in men. Interesting. And I do. So, all, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was saying. So, so if somebody has a, a, their adrenals are off, then would you also look into their thyroid as well, being that they run hand in hand? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So what I was going to say is that all of these labs are imperfect. You know, they're a snapshot in time, you know, whether you're doing blood, saliva, urine, whatever, you know, they're, they're data, it's helpful, but we always want to obviously to combine it with symptoms. And what I find with thyroid too, is that, you know, oftentimes if people have low thyroid, I boost their adrenals and the thyroid gets better, right? 
and oftentimes they're compensating for each other. So if someone has low thyroid and they have low adrenals, and I, um, or if, let's say their adrenals look normal, but their thyroid is low, it's possible that the adrenals are compensating mm -hmm. for low thyroid. And so when I boost then the thyroid, then you get a clearer picture of what the adrenals are actually doing. They might drop a little bit and, oh, okay, that's, that's more of a real picture of what the adrenals were doing. They just kind of puff themselves up to be able to compensate for the thyroid not working as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. And that's something that was uh, personally happened with me was my thyroid was starting to struggle, but my adrenals were stepping up to the plate. So it looked like my adrenals were overactive. But as soon as I got my thyroid, my autoimmune thyroid condition under control, my adrenals came back into balance. So that was actually um, something that often is hard to understand if you're just looking at one test. Right. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about your book. So your book is Fix Your Fatigue, and it's a four-step process. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what are this? can you t take us through a little bit of what those steps are? Absolutely. So, you know, the first step is evaluation, is, you know, running the tests that you need, looking at the symptoms, making sure that, um, that, um, what, what those problems are, making sure that you have all the data that you need before you jump into number two, which is replacing all of the, the deficiencies, the deficiencies in hormones, deficiencies in nutrients. And then number three is removing the crap out of the body. So that's heavy metals, chemicals, molds, infections, allergies, emotions, EMFs. I'm going to keep saying that just so that people can kind of get the, get the point. Um, and then the last one is just repair. You know, you have to repair the mitochondria. You have to repair the hormones, and you need a tincture of time in order to to um, go through all of these process, all, all of these steps. Yeah. So I like I like the way that you actually nourish and support the body before you try to stir up any of the uh, offenders and, and remove those. And I think that's an important step because a lot of people are just you know, quick search in the internet for how do I detox or how do I um, get rid of heavy, heavy metals, but not doing the first steps, which are really important to assess where you are, and then also to nourish and support the body so that it can actually aid in that healing process, or you can aid it because the body is actually healing itself. Yeah, that's super duper important. You know, you can't, if you don't have an intact or functioning immune system, you're not going to be able to kill bugs. Mm. And you have to, your thyroid and your adrenals and your sex hormones and your vitamins all have to be robust in order for you to be able to do that. So, and you know, this is, this has been from, you know, years of trial and error and me seeing people who are sending their patients to me who they're completely depleted, you know, like some of these, you know, Lyme literate doctors, sometimes mm -hmm. they'll, they're so focused on the Lyme or so focused on whatever, you know, their paradigm is that oftentimes they end up draining the patient. So the, the bug may be gone but the patient still doesn't feel any better. And that's because their, um, their hormones are really depleted. Yeah, and that's why it's really important to, to treat the patient and, and to look at the symptoms in addition to the lab tests instead of just trying to get that lab where you want it to be, which is unfortunately what a lot of practitioners are doing. It Not that they're doing it maliciously, they're doing it to help, but really taking into account how that person is feeling and, and if you're like watching and you're going to a practitioner and you're still not feeling good even though your test might say you should feel good then that's a sign that you should do some more investigation and, and maybe seek out some other help so what are a couple things that people watching today can um, can start implementing in their life if they let's say they've had their test done and their thyroid's okay um, they don't have any major medical conditions but they're still feeling that fatigue, what are some things they can do that they can implement over the course of the next couple of weeks after watching this? Absolutely. So let's say that, you know, foods are good, um, you know, they're trying to exercise, but it's kind of wearing them out. And so they've cut back a little bit on that. They're, they've got a good sleep sanctuary. And then we want to step into supplementation. And so what I like mm -hmm. to do is I like to make sure that they're functional during the day. People always like to feel better right away. Mm -hmm. so I like to use things that are strong, but not too strong so that they don't have a lot of side effects. So my favorite herb to use is a Luthero root. And the product that I like is called Adrenal PX. It's by Restorative Formulations. And it's just really nice and smooth and it gives them a good boost of energy. And, um, 
And oftentimes I'll recommend that people take it every three hours during the day because most adrenal support only lasts about three hours. So mm -hmm. I say you wake up and then every three hours until four o'clock, generally after 4 p.m., um, and it'll stimulate you too much to affect your sleep. And if you are on a weird cycle um, where you're working evenings or whatever, I tell people you want to stop six hours before bedtime. So 4 o'clock is 6 hours before 10 p.m. Nice. So is that something that you would recommend taking as you're working on fixing your adrenals or is something that would be taken long term? Uh, both. You know, 80% of all adults have experienced adrenal fatigue or adrenal issues, adrenal dysfunction at some point in their life. And, you know, it seems like it's more stressful than ever right now. You know, mm -hmm. you need two incomes in order to, you know, feed your family and all the stuff that's going on with the world. You know, it can be incredibly stressful. And so I believe that everybody really needs adrenal support. And so boosting the adrenals is, is a big part of that. Nice. That's awesome. So that's one to supplement with that great supplement. And then what's your second tip? And then the other one that I like, which kind of seems a little bit counter to that, is actually something that's going to decrease your cortisol and decrease your adrenaline hormone. So sometimes when people are experiencing overwhelm, it's because mm -hmm. they don't have enough adrenal support. You know, mm -hmm. they're having a hard time waking up in the morning, 3 p.m., they're crashing. You mm -hmm. know, they go from a sitting to a standing position and they get lightheaded. Those are all low adrenal support um, symptoms. But if your cortisol is too high and you're kind of riding on that, sometimes you'll have problems sleeping or you will um, have anxiety, mm -hmm. panic. And so I'll actually recommend that people take a product called Cortisol Manager, which mm. is by Integrative Therapeutics that has phosphatidylserine in it. It has, um, I think, some lemon balm and some theanine, so some really relaxing um, herbs in it that are very supportive for kind of getting cortisol in this middle realm. Mm -hmm. So some people might say, well, if you don't have high cortisol, why are you giving somebody something that's going to decrease cortisol? And what I find is that it takes the edge off. So yeah. I call it the, I don't give a, I, I don't give a S, I don't give a crap pill. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of takes the edge off. So things that normally will flip you out at work or whatever, you're just kind of more relaxed and you can take them in stride. And then you're boosting your adrenals with the adrenal PX. And so you are less overwhelmed. And so the cortisol manager is one tablet in the morning, one tablet at night. And that also seems to help regulate the circadian rhythm and helps mm -hmm. with sleep. Yeah, we use that cortisol manager in our practice quite a bit as well. And I find it to work really nicely and not to have any adverse effects at all. So it's really a great natural supplement. So, so these are your natural uppers and downers. No, I'm just kidding. It's not really natural uppers and downers. But, you know, it's a way to <laughs> easily get some instant relief. And, and that is, that's awesome. So, Dr. Evan, tell us a little bit more about your book and where people can find that. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. So my book is on Amazon right now. It's on Kindle. The paperback is almost done, so it'll be on there shortly. And I go through all of my protocols. You know, I'm really on this mission to help 100,000 people resolve their chronic fatigue. And I know that probably the least expensive way is to give people all of my protocols, give them the guidance that they need, and have them kind of work through it on their own. I've set up a Facebook group for all of the people who have gone through the book and, and want you know, more interaction with me or want some support from other people. I set up a member site on the website that where people can go and download things. So I'm really trying to just create this ecosystem of support for people who are struggling with fatigue. That's awesome. And it, your book is very, very informative and, and it's real easy to understand. It's broken down so that you can kind of implement little steps with action steps in every chapter. So I really love the way you have it laid out. And so I think it's a great book and a great tool for anyone who's dealing with fatigue or if you have someone in your family that's dealing with fatigue, it's a great tool. So Dr. Evan, great job with that. Thank you. And then you also have a free gift for everybody listening today that they can actually download. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So if you go to fixyourfatigue.org, you can find my free sleep guide. So once again, I talk in there about all of the supplements that I recommend, um, lab tests that you can do to determine what's going on with your sleep, you know, what to take in the mornings, like I talked about, what to take at night. 
Um, and it's taken right out of my book. I think it's chapter three, so I think it even says chapter three on it. So you can get a taste of what the book looks like, what those plans are, and the action steps that Dr. Michelle is talking about. Beautiful. That's so great. Now, one more question. So with the lab tests that you recommend, are these lab tests that someone can go to their primary care doctor and ask them to run, or are these labs that need to be done elsewhere? Well, it depends on the prime and get these labs. There are certain online sites where you can go and you can print, you can pay for the labs, you can print out the order, you can go to Quest or LabCorp or Pack Lab mm -hmm. or something that's in your general location. So you can get all the labs and then I tell you in the book how to interpret them. Oh, beautiful. So yeah, that's great. Need a doctor in order to order them. I think that's wonderful, and that's a lot what we've been trying to do in our practice, too, with, with functional medicine, with, uh, you know, microbiome testing and hormone testing is make it more available and help people understand their tests themselves. Even your regular blood tests that you have run at your practitioner every year, it, it's really important to understand those. And so, Dr. Evan, thank you so much for providing a platform for people to get the information that they need, but then also understand what to do with it. So I think that's wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. Awesome. Well, this has been so informative, and I think it's really a, a important topic to explore and something to dig into because life with fatigue is no fun, right? It's no fun. Um, oftentimes, like, you, you often, like, have your relationships suffer, your career suffers, Everything suffers when you're tired, so definitely go download Dr. Evan's sleep guide, pick up his book, Fix Your Fatigue, on Amazon.com. I'm going to put the links to everything you need right below this video, so you can just click through below the video and get your fatigue fixed once and for all. So, Dr. Evan, thank you so much for being here. I had a blast interviewing you, and thank you for being such a great sport and even singing to us today. So, <laughs> you're awesome. Thank you, Dr. Michelle. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, have a great day. And thank you all for listening today. I know there's so many things going on in your life. There's so much pulling at your time. And the fact that you took the time out to listen to something that's going to help you is a win for you today. So give yourself a pat on the back. Thank you for listening today. And I hope to see you back tomorrow for another wonderful interview. Have a great day. Bye-bye.